Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. We found that a good conversation allows us to share what's on our mind, whether current events, what's grinding our gears, or our pet peeves. It also allows us to share our top three, a list of our favorite things on any given subject, most of which are highly opinionated. In closing, we share a good word. Solid friendships are encouraging. Even if we joke and give each other a hard time, our ultimate responsibility is to uplift each other. Our goal is that you'll feel like you're part of the conversation, like you were in the studio with us, and that you feel encouraged after tuning in to our podcast. It's time to join the conversation. All right. That was very exciting, Troy. Yes, you're welcome. Today on the podcast, we will start off with what's on your mind. And that section will be hosted by Mr. Matt Amos. Then we will jump into the top three words. Words. That annoy you. Not phrases. We're just talking about words. There was some discussion on what a phrase actually is. And what was the other one? phrase and a what maybe a term yeah Yeah. i don't i don't remember we were in the chick-fil-a drive-thru you were worried about food i get it (laughs) he was hangry and then we are going to kick it or end it with a uh good word a good word so mr amos what pray tell is on your mind well i've been uh Doing something that I don't normally do recently. Reading? I've been doing a little bit of that, actually, <laughs> yes. And that's something that I don't normally do. Um, but kind of going through some of the videos that pop up on your, your Facebook. You do that all the time. Not, <laughs> no, not like all the time. I'm typically he looking. D- he does that at work. That's why you see it all the <laughs> yeah. time. So that's what he's doing at work. <laughs> He manages our company's Facebook page, so I'm, sh- I'm sure it's research. <laughs> Lots of research. Yeah, you got to yes. find that. You got to find the good stuff. You don't want that. Stale. See what's trending and see if we could fit in there. Yeah, that's, that's good. I keep us current. Yeah, you know? I keep us on the cutting edge <laughs> of prosthetics. Yeah, but going through and you know how it just kind of recommends videos for you to watch, right? And so recently, I've noticed, and I don't know if it's based on you know, what I search for or what I typically try to read when I'm on Google or whatever. But I think the analytics haven't been figured out a little <laughs> bit, which is kind of scary. But what are, the, what are they showing you? Right now they're showing me, and it's just, it's, it's constant, um, talk about the rapture. Ah. So my question to you guys for our listeners who may not know what is the rapture so that the term actually isn't biblical but it it's the gathering up of the church in revelation as talked about there i believe it's in, in thessalonians and I'm trying to think of there it's it's mentioned a few times yeah and so um, basically all that means is the gathering up of the church would you like a definition Yes, go ahead. Uh, The number one definition is a feeling of intense pleasure or joy. Number two definition, North American definition, uh, would be the transporting of believers to heaven at the second coming of Christ. Hmm. Yeah, so there you go. So that's been what's been popping up. Okay. And so the question I pose is Jesus coming back in 2022? And then what I want to (laughs) know is... It's possible. It's possible. And you're asking Troy and me? Yes. And our listeners. Because (laughs) because the further down this hole that you get... Oh, it's crazy. They make claims that it's this year. I saw claims that it was last year. And videos going back to 2012... And, you know, getting the whole Mayan calendar. There were people making claims before you can make videos. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. All wrong, I might add. But the, but there's a, <laughs> I, I guess, and, and kind of in my research, you know, because I've discussed this, you know. Our, our, Is your research all just watching different videos that 
Facebook suggests to you? That's not the research. No, <laughs> the research What's is that, not. The That's research not. is actually uh, basing it off of the the scripture, the biblical accounts, and then how some of these people try to either twist it to fit their agenda. agenda. Yep. So there are basically um, the two main groups that I saw were um, a pre-tribulation rapture and then a post-tribulation rapture. And then I know that there are some that are a mid-tribulation rapture. Give us a definition of tribulation. Go ahead and jump to the biblical one. You don't have to read the one that doesn't apply to our conversation. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to give you some context. We don't need that. That wasn't context. That was uh, opposing context. Right, what, what word did you say? Tribulation. Tribulation. Okay. Continue. Oh, I thought you were going to read the definition. All right. Tribulation, uh, a cause of great trouble or suffering. And biblically, it says that, that lasts for seven years. Right. And... There's a divided into two halves, three and a half and three and a half. Yes. When the scrolls are read. Right. So my question is, what are your personal viewpoints on the subject? This is, this is what's on your mind. Well, but that's what's on my mind. But that's what I want to know. It's what's on my mind is where do you guys stand? What do you think? I don't know. We are having an S. What do you call it? Es- existential. Existential? You're or welcome. I thought it was eschatological question. Eschatology oh. is what we're talking about here is I don't end even, times. I have no that. I don't even know that word. Eschatology. Is that a word that annoys you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> it is now because I don't know it. I don't I, If you're going to have to pin me down, I, I, this is one of those things where, you know, it's it's intellectual talk that doesn't have a sway on your relationship with Jesus. So it's not like a fundamental, I have to believe a certain way. So I, I'll, I'll say post post. Um, I don't know. I used to read into it a lot when I first became a believer. Cause I think when, when that happens, you get excited about it, you know, and you just want to know more and more. So, um, but uh, you know, the digger you deep or, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The digger you deep, <laughs> the deeper you dig. That's going to be our band name. <laughs> the digger you deep. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, the deeper you get into it, the more you find out that you're never going to find out. You know when Jesus is coming back. Um, but the hope is always there, and that's the hope in Christianity is that He is coming back, and that when you die, um, He died for your sins, and He rose again, so that you can rise again. So that's where I've kind of landed. I, I would love for him to come back today. I mean, that'd be awesome. But yeah, I just haven't landed on a, I don't even care. Honestly, I just, I just care that he is coming back and that, uh, when he does come back, hopefully he takes us with us before all the tribulation happens, but that's not clear either. So there's, you know, pre-trib, mid-trib and post-trib, um, theories out there when he's coming back and if he's taking the church and, and all that stuff. And there's scripture that backs all three, you know, just depending on how you look at it. So I don't know. I, I don't really have an opinion other than I hope it's before and I hope it's tomorrow. <laughs> so the, uh, <clears throat> the passage in Thessalonians that Matt was talking about earlier is chapter four, verse 13, probably read through 18 through the end of the chapter. Uh, brothers and sisters, we, do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are, we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command in the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive or left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another one another with these words. And that's just one of the things that, you know, I'm kind of familiar with this passage in, in a couple of the thoughts on this, but 
Um, it doesn't say like you, your your de- Google definition of heaven. It doesn't say that you know this is this is the rapture scripture, right? We're going to be caught up. Um, it doesn't say we're going to heaven from this passage. It's not like this is the dead, the people that were believers were dead. They're calling asleep here. They're going to rise first, and then they're going to, and then after that, those who are still alive, um, we will uh, caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then one of the, if you actually look the, to meet the Lord in the air, if you look at the Greek word, it's actually for a meeting, like a welcoming. So if this is Jesus's return. And you could look at it possibly from the thousand year reign, the millennium um, that's also referenced in Revelation, then this would be post trib if we are going to meet a meeting to welcome, like we would meet Jesus in the clouds, as it says here, as he's coming to earth, not as we are being taken away from the earth, like he's coming back for the thousand right. year reign. So, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty well supported in my view from a, a post. And I haven't always felt that way, but I'm I post trib because we don't want to be here. Like if you, if you think about the tribulation and all the stuff that's coming from this, the scrolls. Yeah. You don't, don't, you don't, don't want to be, be here. here for that. <laughs> so it would be nice to think, yeah, I'm not here for that. I'd rather believe that I'm not going to be here for that. Because there's going to be a lot of suffering. There's going to be a lot of dying. There's going to be a lot of plagues. There's going to be a lot of nasty stuff. Right. And, um, but at no point in time anywhere in Scripture does it talk about that Christians are not going to not suffer. Like, I mean, it actually says that we will suffer. Because you're a believer. Yeah. Isn't that Philippians so, 2? Yeah, Peter talks about it as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, and that's... and. I guess ultimately that's kind of what I was driving the the conversation to is, you know, my dad and I and uh, my mom were actually having this discussion um, a few weeks back and each of them has kind of opposing views on the deal. Mm-hmm. And of course I'm sitting there in the middle and kind of digesting what both of them are saying. In the middle as in your mid trip? No. Just in the middle of that discussion, mm. listening to the two of them <laughs> go back and forth. And to me, I tend to think as well more post than any other. Um and I just really look at the example that Christ set because he he was not it's not like he didn't have to suffer in his lifetime and then ultimately leading up to a death, he suffered even more. And so I look at that, like that's the, that's kind of the roadmap for our lives as, as Christians. And we're going to have to deal with the same things that, that he dealt with, maybe not to his degree, but we're still going to have to, to suffer. And I think that the kind of the pre-trib people out there, are I think they're weakening themselves because if if it should happen that we have to survive through that, is that going to rattle their faith? One. And two, are they not going to be prepared to go through that? Because if you're caught off guard and it says, I'm writing to tell you this to so that you're not surprised when it happens, um, and I think that is kind of overall, you know, he's talking there when this all happens, don't be, don't be surprised. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly where, cause I had some, I mean, if I actually wrote down all the verses and everything that I researched, I mean, we'd, we'd blow your trying to stay to 45 minutes well out of the water. <laughs> yeah. But I look at all that and then I see, and it was just kind of funny sitting there with my parents and listening to them talk about it. And it, it's not like it got, heated or angry, but you could tell that there were tensions between the two views. Did they have a poison opposing views or yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. So I looked at that and I'm like, okay, 
one way or another, he's coming back. And for me, it's always better to be prepared, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Well, when you say prepared, like, what are you talking about prepared? So prepared for the Christian or for anybody who is, is not saved. Our goal is to bring people to, to the Lord, Mm -hmm. right? Go and make disciples, go and make disciples. So in, in, in my view, none of that matters pre post mid nothing, because like you said, and you kind of beat me to the punch earlier was get right with the Lord, get saved. And ultimately the rest of it is going to work itself out. But as long as you have that relationship, you're good. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, you know, and then the, and I think the, the pre-trib post-trib is just almost kind of like uh, almost evil at work. When you get that opposing, that anger and that animosity between two groups and it divides a group where we should all be united because whether or not it's pre post or whatever, having that united front, cause people on the outside, they see a division like that and they're like, well, they don't even have their stuff straight. So, yeah. And I, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting, but, uh, you kind of, we'll step back outside of the church here, but the ch- we're human, but, um, all, all that we try to do is draw lines but between things like, uh, we we, we were just talking earlier today, you know, what, what Marine division did you serve in? The fifth, first, fifth, first, first, Marine. first Marine, fifth Divi- division, first Marine division, first Marine division. So you're going to tell me, not that I'm asking you to, but you probably could say why <laughs> first Marine division is better than second Marine division. Sure. Yeah. You, and you've got that, you know, and then people outside looking in are like, why are, why is one Marine say that these Marines are better than those other Marines? You know, like, why are they infighting? So th- that happens in the church as well. Like, I've got an opinion about this, and this is how I interpret that. Um, and I think one of the things in where I've, it took me a long time uh, to get to a place where I, I consider it maturity to on these kinds of things that are like, are the Marines good? Yes. Or first Marines better than second? If you feel so, if you feel that way, that's fine. If I'm, I'm not going to, uh, here's some things that they did. That's awesome. But here's some things that the second Marines did that that's awesome. You know, you could have your own opinion. Not a big deal. I like the Marines, the Marine Corps. So that, that I used to not be like that with scriptural things. Like, well, I can't, if you don't believe the, the interpretation of this specific passage about a um, very minute detail that has no bearing on anything from an eternal perspective, then I'm, I'm going to argue with you about it T- twofold one, because I was arrogant. Number two, because I love to argue. I did a lot of that. <laughs> That's apparent. Yeah. <laughs> I think we see that yeah. quite often. Yeah. Actually. So anyway, hard headed. Um, and, and that's kind of where I am. You know, I, this, I don't think this has a bearing on your salvation at all. Anybody's, but it's pretty interesting. And you could spend a whole heck of a lot of time digging into details and finding reasons to argue with, some people that may disagree with you. Yeah. But there shouldn't be any tension. No. It should be a, Oh, thanks for sharing that. That's, that's good information. Right. But I just, it, it, to me, I look at it. And as long as we agree on the basics. Yeah. Like but, Jesus is coming back. Like you can't say that he's not, cause right. it clearly says that in scripture that he is. Yeah. You know, but believing in the gospel, the death, burial, the resurrection and ascension. It, you're good. Yeah. Right. As long as we can all come together on that, I think, what do they call it? The, I think there's a term for it. Le, uh, is it legalistic? I'm trying to think just where you go off on tangents on. No, uh, legalism is more just uh, the sticking to the rules. rules. Yeah. We've got That's rules. Legalism. So if you're a Christian, you should live a good life. Well, legalism say, well, let me define what a good life is and we'll, we'll get all the way down to what you should be doing. That's, that's exactly what happened with the Pharisees back in Jesus time. Right. Like it says, you know, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. Well, that means you don't need to be working on the Sabbath. Okay. Well, what let's define work. Well, work would be walking further than X amount of distance. So nobody could walk past that on the Sabbath and work would be, if you drop something and you've been over to pick it up, that would be okay. But if you were like trying to pick potatoes out of the ground, that's work. So well, you know, they, they even got, got so far as to say, if you spit on the ground, then you're 
tilling the soil. Like you're doing something to the soil so you can't even spit on the ground. Like it, it got pretty bad. But yeah. And if, if that's totally not what a relationship with Jesus is like, that's humankind trying to define every right. portion of a person's life so that they could understand better what it would be like to follow. And that's not what Jesus did at all. So I guess maybe a better term would be just getting in, into the weeds on stuff that. Yeah. Or phrase, I guess I should say it's a phrase getting into the weeds is a phrase, not a term, <laughs> but yeah. So I, I mean, but it, it's just kind of funny because, you know, you've got now, you know, with all the videos that have been popping up for me, obviously based on what I read and what I yeah. search and, and seeing that. And then just so you know, the algorithms are built that they would find videos that they already know that you would agree with. They're that good. I, yes, I, they might be built that way, but there's those videos. Yeah. But that, kind of, kind of like the one that you brought up when you just kind of searched it real quick the other day. And it was that, was that dude talking about all the numbers and trying to do all the, you remember that the numerology or whatever it was, or no, I don't. Yeah. You brought up a video and you're like, this dude's a wacko, you know? And so I've been getting a lot of those videos uh, like, oh, this person is definitely <laughs> wacko. Yeah. Like that's not, that's right. not what's happening at all. You know, some of those are pretty good entertainment though, but, but, but their, but their goal is for you to keep watching and right. you typically want to watch stuff that you agree with, right. and which is why we have the political divide that we do on social media as well, because you only get to see things that, that you agree, you agree with. with. And so there's no other opinion out there because that's all, all you're seeing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and we've talked about that before actually. Yeah. But what was funny to me is I think the video that started it all was I got to researching because I wanted to know, just like you did, who these theologians were that they're bringing in to see how the NASA is pub- hiring theologians, 24 theologians. Mm, yeah, I've heard of that. So I've, to I've, understand how people would interpret if we have extraterrestrial life. Yeah. And so I think that's the video that actually started it all. And then it just kind of <laughs> went down the rabbit hole, as they say. Um, and into, into reading about that. What so, time of day were you watching these videos? Uh, work hours. I'm sure. No, <laughs> no, I don't watch this, any videos until after five. Yeah. This, this is like, <laughs> I think one morning he came in and he was just like, uh, more grumpy than usual. He's usually grumpy, but this was a little bit more. It was the night he had that discussion with his parents. And then, and then he, I'm like, you know, Hey man, like, what's up? He's like, well, I didn't get to sleep till four. In the morning. <laughs> so I think that was, it was that the night. No. Or was no. that, that was Cobra Kai night. <laughs> no, no. Cobra Kai was on a, uh, that released on a Thursday. So I, I mean, I, did you watch the whole season again? Like, yeah. 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 One shot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I started a little bit later. So I, I was going to start at midnight <laughs> or 2 a.m. whenever it originally released. And then I was like, I was awake, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going to make it. I'm going to start this tomorrow. Yeah. And so I slept real good and then watched almost all night. Yeah. The next night. But yeah, it was good. But anyway, so, and, and that's kind of where all, all of this started. I just wanted to know who, who, who NASA thought that these theologians were. I never did find my answer yet. Cause I got, <laughs> I think it was, they were like asking for people to apply. Oh, were they? Yeah. I didn't see that. I just saw the, where they were bringing them in. They were going to hire. Like, so it's like a, you, you could apply for it. Oh, I could. Yeah. I've got an internet education. And you, you meet a demographic that that would look good on their HR checklist. What? what? Country boy? Huh? <laughs> Amputee? Wounded veteran. Yeah. Yeah. See how they probably get bonus points for that. Yeah. I slid that in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, I just, I, I, I thought it was interesting just because I, I've yeah. never really. I I think it's funny. Well, I've never wh- really got, I, I guess I, I myself have never really gotten into the weeds on the whole deal. And so kind of reading and seeing other people's opinions, because I've always just thought what I thought. Yeah. You know, I was like, we're going to have to go through this whole thing and then he's going to come back and that's going to be awesome. So whatever. And that's just kind of what I originally right. thought based on what I read. Yeah. And that's uh, the left behind series. Like the hay and Jenkins had a really big, um, pre-trib. Yeah. That's, that's their point of view. And, and so they wrote the novels around that view. Oh, so was that? most everybody that got into revelation 
kind of got in through those books in the nineties. Uh, yeah, late nineties, uh, early two er, thousands, early nine. Well, yeah, late nineties, I guess, because yeah. I was on, I was in college. There's, a, there's late a bunch high of books. school. Yeah, into high school when I came. Anyway. Yeah, so eschatology is... I, I actually saw that when I was... Doctrine of the Last Things. Eschatology. I'm going to add that to my vernacular. Yeah, do it, man. There you go. I noticed I used one of my top three words. Vernacular. All right. Speaking of top three, I think we ought to take a break real quick and then jump into our top three words that annoy you. You got it. 1783, the first victory. Victorious in war, this year sees America earn her independence. At Adam Rolls Pennant, we celebrate victories at the end of war. 1783 is the first of many such celebrations in our nation's history. This is an elegantly refined blend of sandalwood, cedar, and tea tree. The subtle, lingering, woody scent of the sandalwood, light cedar, and the top notes of tea tree is the essence of masculinity, honoring the men who fought and continue to fight to provide us our independence. Check it out at admiralspinnet.com. Without it, you might as well shave. And we're back. All right. Hitting up the top three words that annoy you. I'm going to go first. Do it. I dare you. Number three. I don't even have to pull my list up because I already know what they are. Number three. Mask. <laughs> That word annoys the ever loving out of me these days. Mask. Not only around Halloween, but every day of my life. That word. What uh where does it come into play? Um like, just you know. Like kids? Because I I'll be honest with you, I went to an event I don't know, right after the right after the first of the year. And the building I was walking in had a mask required sign. Yeah. Shocking. I haven't been anywhere that required one in a long time. So, well, and and then I looked at, I looked through the door and like 75% of the people in there weren't wearing one. So I'm like, yeah, neither am I, you know? Yeah. It's one of my kids schools. Yeah. Still does it. Still hearing about it. Still seeing it. Some places are still encouraging it, but not saying that they're required which yeah. just rubs me the wrong way sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about mascara? I don't mind that word too much. Just mask. Just mask. Mask up. Mask up. Number two. That would That's be a, a phrase. Term. That's a, uh, that would be a phrase. That's a complete sentence. M- number two. Vaccine. <laughs> that word. There's a trend. Uh, yeah. And I'm not going to go into any detail there, but don't like that word. And number I, one, I don't mind if you say that va- I'm tired of vax. Like just say vaccine. It's not that much more. Effort. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. That would be a abbreviation that annoys me, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. It's a good movie though. Vaxed. If you haven't seen it. No, I wasn't talking past tense. Oh, okay. Um, and number one mandate. <laughs> that word. That almost made my list to be honest takes, with you. <laughs> takes the cake mandate hate that word i don't like hearing it yeah so that's it did y'all see a theme there yeah there's a theme <laughs> a theme I'm well, not, like i'm gonna i'm not better though i'm gonna get started um with my top three like i i like the top three list you know like it's it's kind of fun to talk about you know like things like this and like, I just think it's great. Like is my number three word that annoys me. <laughs> like when people like say it all the like time. Like, like I just can't. Like, like I can't. Like really, I literally like, I can't. Yes. Like. <laughs> That's so good. Because I, mean, I notice it every time somebody uses it like every other word in a yeah. sentence. One of them is my daughter. <laughs> she uses like a lot. And I tell her to stop all the time. A good friend of mine who might be listening, I'm not going to name any names, but you know you do it. (laughs) I've noticed it in my kids, and then I will catch myself. (laughs) Because you noticed when I was doing it leading into this, you're like, why is he saying like all of a sudden? I I did. I started like 
<laughs> I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. But I'm the same way. And when I even when I send a text message and because it's short, you know, it, it takes out a few words and like this, you know, or whatever. He was like that. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of like this, he said like that. And like she this said, <laughs> and then, and then I said, and, and you know, just replace like with said. And then I said, I, yeah, I or, just, and then I was like, you know, yeah, I catch myself and it annoys me that oh, I'm yeah. saying it. I know I do. Yeah, I do. So one, way. one that, uh, I guess it's a word. I don't even know if it's a word. It's a word that is just it needs to stop being used and annoys me irregardless. <laughs> Instead of just saying regardless, regardless, people say irregardless. Same thing. Is that mostly a Southern thing or have you heard it? I haven't heard, have heard it in the great Plains. A lot region. of people, a lot of people use it. It's in the Midwest mostly. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So regardless of your geographic location, uh, ir- irregardless, it's even harder use, to say. Yeah, I know. Like a, it's like irreconcilable. No, that's a but I think I think word. it adds. More. I know, but it's hard to say too. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that's emotion based, and it, it's more emphatic when you say "irregardless" instead of "regardless." You think it's more emphatic. I think it's more ignorant when you use that. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying that I, I think that's the reasoning behind it. And number uh, my number one, tertiary. Well, see, I like that word. I do not. I don't even know what that means. So, primary, oh. secondary tertiary Hmm. third do you really have to go that far third in order or level so i was at the same point with you but this was decades ago not like when i was in school but i was at work and some guy that you know what this brainiac engineer you know was like tertiary i'm like what he's like (laughs) it means third and i'm like why don't you just say third yeah (laughs) and uh and then he like said tertiary, every other sentence there for the tertiary. next year. The, he would just be, <laughs> you know, I don't know. And then I'm like, I just uh, don't like that word. See, in the I, I think Chet really just didn't like that guy. That's true. <laughs> Until he's he's an alright guy, but then like the only thing that you do that really annoys me is use that one word. So just stop using that word. It's annoying. See, and, and we used it. <laughs> all the time in Iraq, Afghanistan, because we used it in terms of devices. So IEDs. So you find the primary device, there may be secondary and tertiary devices. So always be, what's the fourth one? I think they, uh, I think honestly we use tertiary to define everything third and beyond. Oh, okay. So, cause I don't, I don't remember recall any words past that. Yeah. But, I think that's probably when I first heard it was mm-hmm. when they were describing it. And of course your buddy was an engineer. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with, with ours. They were engineers or, um, uh, explosive ordnance disposal guys, yeah. you know, EOD guys Yeah, that would use it. But you know, and typically in the Marine Corps, those are your, <laughs> those are, your, those are your smart guys. It's primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, Quinary, scenary, septenary, octenary, nonary, and denary. Wasn't that in the Game of Thrones, denary? Uh, denary, I think, is a uh, coin. Coin in the mm. olden um, times. What was that? Oh, there's also a word for 12th. What's the fifth? Duo denary. What's the <laughs> duo denary? That's Duodenary. a band name. Though that, along with all the other words after tertiary. Is rarely used. Which was it? The fifth one that sounded like rock quarry, quinary. Um, quinary is fifth. Yeah, quinary. All right. At some point in time, in the <laughs> two thousand twenty second year of our Lord, I'm going to drop a quinary <laughs> in a sentence. But well, you have to. Aren't you going to have to drop the qua, quaternary? No, as well, because no. that's fourth. No, you could just jump straight. I want to know your quinary priority. With your kids, not your <laughs> primary priority or your secondary. I don't. I don't have to go into all that. Just give me your fifth priority. Uh, Quinary. Yeah. 
So tertiary, drop it. All right, Matt, what you got? What annoys you? Well, uh, my tertiary word (laughs) is... uh, I'm going to flatten your tires. (laughs) Is a a term. Um, So it's two words combined to have one meaning. Viral blizzard. Never even heard of that. No, because it was all over the, well, for about three days before everybody started like really calling them out, the media was talking about this winter being a viral blizzard for the coronavirus. Like we're in for a viral blizzard. What media do you consume? Because that didn't show up in any of my. It didn't. I can't remember because it's just like the news, the news media, um, really annoys me with the terms that they come out with. Um, whether it's uh, tornado season and they come up with, uh, I can't remember the one that really annoys me that they just like literally started saying within like in, in the last <laughs> three years. You ever provide feedback to these news people? You should. I, I should, but I don't. I did once and I got called out. I uh, do tell. I was reading a tweet <laughs> from a weather guy here in town. And, uh, he was, the tweet was about what I sh- what you should wear. Like you need to bring, you need to have your heavy coat, gloves, and a hat today. And I'm like, just tell me what the weather's going to do. Let me decide what clothes I'm going to wear, buddy. <laughs> you know? And then he tweeted back at me, you know, cause I'm just like, eh, media guy. Hey, you know, I didn't like tweet <laughs> at him. I just like quote tweeted him and like he found it or whatever oh wow he he dig yeah dig some deep and he's like well i'm doing this because i'm trying to help people make good decisions and you know young kids and whatever else and i'm like dude dude, report the weather if people don't know that if if it's you know two degrees fahrenheit with a wind chill of 20 below that they should be wearing a hat then let them go just let them let, let, let me there. know what what kids are are listening to <laughs> the weather guy news weather anchor yeah. guys. What should I wear today? I, mean, I, if, I will have to sit here without clothes on <laughs> until the weatherman tells me. I mean, at that point, if if you're that person where it's minus twenty and the wind is blowing at forty miles an hour, and you're going to walk outside in a shirt, a t shirt, and let's just say jeans and boots, and you see those people. Uh, just uh, all of a sudden go down <laughs> Hey, at that point, trample the weak and hurdle the dead. I well, mean, especially just... <laughs> when your weatherman told you not to do that. He told you what to wear. You didn't listen. Hey yeah. man, he's so just, anyway, he's just trying to be positive. Maybe you and... need to comment and then you could have a dialogue since this time. And it's been two years. This man has never tweeted out what to wear ever again. So I, you know, even though he shot back at me, I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe he had, a, don't do it he had an internal discussion with himself when he got home and goes, you know what? Yeah. I'm not. The I went to Lord. meteorology school, not fashion school. Like, <laughs> oh, man, I, was, I sure wish I could remember that word. For, uh, maybe uh, it'll come back. Dave. Maybe one day you will. Maybe yeah. Well, cause it's, it's like a, you know, when um, a bunch of tornadoes all at once, you know, and then all of a sudden it's a tornado, a vortex, a tornado outbreak or, or today's a, <laughs> today's a, Viral blizzard? Kind of, but it's the same thing, for, <laughs> but it's like for a tornado, right? So today's a whatever, you know, I can't think of it, but I'll, it, it you might. You said it, it on a podcast. Be. All right, number two. I, I might have, What's actually. your secondary? My secondary <laughs> word that annoys me is influencer. <laughs> I hate that word. I hate it. I wanna, because of the YouTube stuff or because everybody's an influencer now on social media? Is that yes. why? Yeah. It's, 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 that's a job description now. No, like it is. It's the fastest growing job in because America. Anybody right could now. just say you're an influencer. I that, guess. But, but well, that's what to I mean. be defined is, as a job, it had, you have to be making income. But what I'm doing it's not, it. that's not that like hard. I've got do. four YouTube channels or whatever. You're an like, influencer. I'm not an influencer. Yes, you are. No. Yes, you are. It's a self, no. it's a self given title. Well, I hey, don't give what, myself hey, that title. Listen, we're influencers, I guess on rumble because we've made like 38 cents. If yes. anyone has ever so technically been influenced by this podcast, I want you to leave a comment right now. 
but my, what is the um, but what is the criteria and who is who, it's almost like a self-imposed title like i'm an I, i'm going to be an influencer i would or say I, I am an influencer i would say you're what an do you, influencer. what do you do what do you do i'm a social media influencer well who decided that i think the the amount of subscribers and activity and money coming in that they have i think there ought to be a set limit that that makes them a Influence. Maybe we have levels. Well, we can all be videographers. We all have. I walk around with a video, video camera, camera in my pocket on your phone. That's yeah. right. I mean, I'm a, I'm a DJ. <laughs> yeah, scratch yeah. it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. That word just annoys me, and it makes me cringe every time I hear it. I get it. You know, the bad thing about this is that. Anytime we are ever going to talk about anything that annoys us and I work with Matt, we're both going to use these words against us from here on out. Oh, I thought of that beforehand. I thought I didn't. Wow. I'm I really glad that, that, uh, yeah, that like, Matt's uh, going to say tertiary every day. Yeah. <laughs> and like, like, I mean, he's like going to say gonna it all so the bad. time. <laughs> totally. Like yeah. it's going to be like ridiculous, irregardless of what you think. <laughs> All right. All and, right. And primary. Uh, my primary <laughs> word that annoys me is bowl. Bowl? Bowl. B O W L. Bowl. 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 Not bull. Not bull, as in bowl. The cow with balls. No. Bowl. <laughs> bowl. Bowl. That's what you do with, with seafood when you submerge it in water, you bowl it. Boil it. No, that's that's uh, that's southern or boil. Bowl. So why bowl? <laughs> like, I don't. The verb or the noun? Did you the, have a bowl haircut when you were a kid? The noun. The noun. So the, the act of rolling a ball towards pins is okay. I still don't like the <laughs> word, word because it sounds too similar. I mean, it is the it's and the it's, same word and it's spelled the exact same way, but it has a different meaning. Okay. Is there another word for bowling like there is for pool? Like billiards? Billiards? I don't know. Pin, pin striking? <laughs> I, I got no clue. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I I don't know where my intense hate for this word came from, <laughs> but I believe it was a Spangles commercial. Ah. Uh, with the breakfast bowl. The, the, because yes. And I they they say bowl. I don't know uh, I think in a in a thirty second commercial, I counted eight, eight times. <laughs> so get like it's not just breakfast bowl. It's get your breakfast sausage bowl and your yeah, bacon the, the, bowl, the bacon and bowl, and the the, the potato the bowl, hot potato the egg bowl, bowl. And, the, <laughs> and they played this commercial. This is back before XM Radio was a thing. This is back before Apple Music, and it might not have been before Apple Music, but it was before like you could really integrate it with your car and listen to it. Yeah, easily. And that commercial would come on every after every two songs, three songs. Wow! And you'd have to sit there, and and I'd have to hear it. And the way that the dude pronounced the word, <laughs> I, I literally wanted to jump through and strangle. I don't know. Renee Stevens. Just I don't like, know. why would you put this? Who's the owner of Spangles, which is a relatively local fast food joint for those of you that aren't in Wichita. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's, it's a local commercial. The, uh, there's a commercial that, that that's on now and they, they pronounce, a, I consider it mispronounce a word. I, I can't believe how worked up it gets me. Like it, it's, <laughs> what word is that? What word is uh, that? uh, the word is realize, but the guy pronounces it relies. So he, <laughs> yeah, he puts the inflection on the wrong part. And, and he doesn't say like, it's not like real. It's like read to do again. Realize. Realize. <laughs> not realize. You need to realize your potential. Like, and <laughs> I, I, I turn, I typically turn the station when that commercial comes on. And I listen to talk radio, so it's not like I don't want to hear anybody talking. It's like, you got to pronounce your words right. See, I would do that locally with that commercial, and it would be on all the channels. All the channels. Yeah. Hey, hey, I don't know. It I, just, know I know what I'm bringing him bad, for breakfast tomorrow morning. <laughs> a, a bowl. <laughs> a uh, just 
You know what? Do you not like even looking at the dish? No, I don't mind looking at the dish at all. Yeah. You know, and matter of fact, just bring me a cup. Oh, so if like, hey, would you like a cup of soup or a bowl of soup? You're going to be like, cup. Just give me a cup. (laughs) I don't want to have to hear the word. I don't know. It, it, you know, and it's not one of those things that I, I pay attention to like all the time. If somebody says it, it's, it's but when it shows up, but it when shows it up. shows up and you just hyper focus on it and you just get tired of hearing the word. But anyway, that's my primary. Hmm. Cool. Crockery is another word for <laughs> dishes, plates, bring, bowls, and cups. Bring me a cockery. A crockery. Oh, crockery. <laughs> <laughs> that's Another. coming up again <laughs> <laughs> oh wow i think we need to hop on over to a good word yeah, quickly <laughs> and it's not cockery <laughs> no um so one of the things we're going to be doing uh here over the next quite a few episodes is we're we're going to go through a devotional book um actually use a devotional book as our guide I guess you could say, in, in guiding our good word discussions. So we're actually using uh, a book, book number two uh, from the uh, Chosen 40 Days with Jesus. Uh, so the first one here, uh, the, the word uh, that's, that's being discussed is identity. And the passage comes from Matthew 16, uh, 13 through 18, uh, which is a very powerful, uh, very powerful passage. It says, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, He asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you're Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Um, it talks about here like this is a this is actually a miracle, and in all the miracles that we we think about uh, are typically the healing, um, you know, water to wine, walking on water, those kinds of things. But the the actual revelation that God gave Peter to know that Jesus was the Messiah um, was a miracle. And, you know, Jesus even mentioned that, you know, Peter didn't get that answer on his own. Um, Peter got that answer because God allowed him uh, to know it, um, which is pretty neat. And it also the, the way that Jesus was talking to his disciples, who do other people say that I am? And then, you know, they're all throwing answers down and they're all of them answered, you know, they're like, um, they said, some say John. So they're all just kind of throwing out there and then who, who do you think I am? And only Peter answered that one, um, which I think it's uh, pretty interesting. So, you know, what we can ask ourselves, and and I know that that we've got a lot of people that listen to the podcast that that, that follow Jesus, but if you don't, you know, you know, you could, you could ask yourself, who who is Jesus to you? Um, who do you say that he is? And there are a lot of people out there that, that say he's, you know, like in this case, you know, the, the passage of John the Baptist or Elijah or a prophet, there are a lot of people that say that Jesus is a good teacher um, or, or was a wise man that walked the earth. And some people even say he's a myth, which is crazy because there's so much historical documentation even outside of Scripture for him. Um, but uh, I, I think ultimately the question that we should ask ourselves is how does Christ's true identity and his identity here is that he was the Messiah. He was the one that was coming to be a sacrifice for all of our sins so that we had an opportunity to have an eternal relationship with him. So how does his true identity impact uh, or solidify our identity? So how does his identity impact your identity? Who we are. Who you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And as, as I think that's a question we all need to be able to answer. And I think uh, one of the other misinterpretations of this passage is um, this is, and this is kind of you know Simon, you know Peter, Saint Peter, the rock. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> and just getting a little bit deeper into that, um, digging into the Greek. There's actually two words uh, that are two different words that are used in the passage. Um, 
I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock. So Peter was a, uh, you know, we know that his actual name was Simon. Um, Peter was a name that was given to him and Peter means stone or rock. Uh, and in those, um, that definition is a Petrus, uh, is, is what it's talking about there in the Greek. And then, um, which is something that you could lift. It's, it's not a, um, it's not like a mountain kind of thing. Um, not a boulder. And when, so you are Peter and on this rock. So the, in the Greek, it would say that you are Petrus and on this Petra, I will build my church. And that's actually the difference between those two things is, is one of them is a movable rock that could be lifted and used for building those kinds of things. But when he says on this rock, I will build my church, that's Petra. And that's actually bedrock. Um, that's not the same. So he's using two different words there. So he's not saying that Peter is the saint that the whole entire church is going to be built on. It is actually, um, he's calling him by his nickname and he's like on this bedrock and the bedrock is that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Mm -hmm. That's where the foundation of church is, is built is on, um, the answer that, that Peter gave that, you know, you are the son of God. Yeah, he said, you're the son, Christ, the son of the living God. So you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. On that bedrock is what the church is built on. That's Very it. Good. I like it. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.